Hi everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this webinar. Um, could I just ask uh, someone just to confirm in perhaps the chat window that you can hear us and that everything uh, seems to be okay? Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, so my name is Amanda Wolf, um, and I'm joined by my colleague Katie Dean, and uh, we're from the marketing team at Palgrave. Uh, before we get started with the webinar, uh, we just wanted to run through a couple of logistics, uh, which will just take a second. Um, so firstly, you may notice that your microphones have been muted. Uh, this is just to ensure that there isn't any background noise um, or feedback which could interfere with the sound quality during the webinar. Um, we do have some time allocated at the end of the webinar for questions, um, so if anything uh, crops up for you during the course of the webinar, uh, please feel free to type that into the questions box. Um, you can record your questions during the webinar, but we'll also prompt you again towards the end. Um, and if we run out of time uh, during the webinar, um, please make sure that you post your questions and then we can follow up with you afterwards. Okay, great. So uh, now moving on, uh, we're delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Stella Cottrell to this webinar. Uh, Stella has an international reputation for teaching and learning, with her publications for staff and students being used by universities and colleges around the world. First published in 1999, the Study Still Skills Handbook is now in its fourth edition and is the best-selling study skills guide. In addition to the Study Skills Handbook, Stella has authored a number of other best-selling guides, including critical thinking skills, uh, which obviously we'll be talking about um, in a moment in a little more detail, um, but also Skills for Success, Dissertations and Project Reports, and the annual publication, The Palgrave Student Planner, and that's just to name a few. Sales of uh, Stella's publications have exceeded one million um, in total, and also um, uh, Palgrave's interactive e-learning study skills resource, Skills for Study Campus, um, has been based on Stella's work. So Stella, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us. Hello, and uh, welcome to everybody else to the webinar as well. Okay, so today what we're going to be covering, um, firstly Stella will be talking through the importance of critical thinking skills across um, academic study, um, the world of work, and also everyday life. And then she'll be covering practical ways to teach and enhance students' critical thinking skills. Um, she'll then move on to address the challenges and the benefits of critical thinking skills for students. And then next, she'll be talking to you about the new and third edition of her book, Critical Thinking Skills. Um, and then finally, hopefully, we'll be able to take some of your questions. Um, so now what we're going to do is just hold a brief poll um, to hear more from you on how and why your students might be struggling with critical thinking. So I'll just that, bring that up onto the screen for you now. And... So um, I'll just give you a few moments to vote um, from the options that you can see there, and you can choose more than one option. Um, great. So I'm just going to bring the poll to a close now, so if you could cast your final vote. Um, so let's have a look at the results and just see um, what some of the common problems that you're seeing are. So I can see that um, the, the main result that we're getting is that students don't really know what's expected of them in terms of critical thinking, um, and also that they lack a model that they can apply as well. And I think that's definitely something that we can be addressing today and helping you with. Um, also, over-reliance on a single source um, is the third uh, most voted for issue. And also some students do see critical thinking skills as negative. And so, yeah, these are some of the issues that we'll definitely be addressing today. So, Stella, um, I'll hand over to you. Uh, well, thank you. Um, interesting to see um, uh, how that poll shaped up. Well, the ability to think critically is a wonderful gift to pass on to your students. Critical thinking, it's like a mental double take. It helps us to challenge our natural tendencies to assume the obvious, to draw snap judgments, to jump to conclusions that the apparent answer must be the best or the only one, 
to stick stubbornly to our own opinion, believing that we must be right, of course, and to defend what we believe are indisputable facts. Oh, I don't seem to be moving down there, uh, KT. Well, I'll just carry on and see if the... Ah, oh, lovely, thank you very much. So um, it helps... Um, us to challenge um, our natural tendencies, as I say, and when we apply criticality, we're looking for more objective insights based on analysis, reasoning, evidence, and even-handed consideration. Such skills are recognized as essential to academic success and research, but there also seems to be an increasing recognition of their value to everyday life, to citizenship and business. Employers say they want to recruit graduates with these kinds of thinking skills. The Wall Street Journal reported that by 2013, job adverts were twice as likely to refer to critical thinking than in 2009. And for students to do well professionally, as well as academically, they need to be aware of the importance of well-developed critical abilities and to be able to apply these to new situations. So, how do students acquire such skills? While some courses teach these, many students are not taught them explicitly, either at school or at university. It's sometimes assumed that enhanced critical ability is an automatic byproduct of higher education, but is this the case? Well, in their report, Academically Adrift, Aram and Roxa looked into this for around 2,000 students in the USA between the years 2005 to 2009. And what did they find? Well, a large minority, 45%, showed no significant improvement after two years. And even by the end of their courses, it wasn't unusual for students to struggle with such things as distinguishing fact from opinion, with presenting arguments objectively when drawing on conflicting sources, and with working out the cause of a problem without being unduly influenced by emotional appeals or by other persuasive devices. Now, this isn't just an issue for the USA. Recruiters in India, for example, have commented that graduates lack the critical skills needed in a modern workplace. In the UK, the rapid growth of essay mills has been associated, at least in part, with students needing more support to develop critical thinking skills. In the Emirates, where many students are taught by Western universities, students struggle with the critical thinking required with them on their courses, and there are similar issues in China and Australia and elsewhere. As it seems students can go through university without really improving their critical abilities, the first practical step we can take is to make sure that we create those opportunities in and alongside the curriculum to develop critical awareness and its application in diverse contexts. Unfortunately, there is no end to the variety of ways that this can be addressed, whether through discussion, through debates, critiques of art and music, evaluating TED Talks, using social media, through to changing perspectives, through studying and working off campus or indeed overseas, as well as through workshops or classes that specifically address critical thinking. For example, you could use class time to investigate how different perspectives on an issue arise. You will know of classic examples from your own subject, for example, and, and how those arose, and you can bring those out with students. You might also like to consider why people hold on to their points of view, even when presented with compelling evidence. To the contrary, what might be invested in their decision not to critique their own decisions and perspectives? What vested interest might possibly be at play? And then there are always topical issues in the news, such as Brexit, which generate different arguments and data. These are a rich source, not just for critical evaluation in their own right, but for discussing how opinions form and differ. If you've got accessing to voting technologies, you could take a poll of students' opinions on an issue before you make a critical analysis of the arguments and of the evidence in class, and then further polls to see when and why class opinion changes. You can use such technologies for debates on subject-based issues too, of course. One simple way of exposing students to different perspectives is to discourage reliance on a single source. Activities and assignments can be designed so that students need to draw explicitly on two or more texts to examine subtle differences in how these treat the same issue. 
the more similar these are, the closer the analysis that is required to draw out the nuanced dis distinctions. And there are, of course, naturally occurring opportunities in any academic discipline to bring students back to that core issue of evidence. If you had to reduce criticality to a single question, it would be a variant of how good is the evidence, whether this relates to the existence of the Loch Ness Monster or evidence that supports any kind of assumption or comment or solution for judgments or decisions. In class and in feedback on student work, we can keep bringing students back to this core question, how good is the evidence, examining together, of course, what constitutes good evidence in that context. Well, drawing attention to critical thinking is one thing, and lecturers do, of course, do that all the time. So why doesn't the message get through? Why is critical thinking such a challenge for students? In my work, I found that there are many, many different kinds of challenges. So um, today I'm just going to touch on four of these or four sets of these that I think are worth addressing head on, walking straight into the mouth of the crocodile there. So the first relates to issues such as mindset and identity. We can be so familiar with critical practice that it's easy to forget that for some students it sounds very frightening. They may think it sounds difficult, so they don't want to engage with it and then fail. Some find the word critical itself to be off-putting. They don't want to be negative or unkind. They may worry that their course is somehow going to make them attack their core beliefs and values, turning them into different kinds of people and estrange them from family and community. So all that can feel quite scary. As educators, we can give time early on to talk through such anxieties and misconceptions, dispelling the myths and letting students know that they aren't alone with such fears. In addressing misconceptions, it's really important to emphasize that good criticality entails some kind of even-handedness in drawing out the positives as well as the negatives the benefits as well as the disadvantages, the strong points as well as the weak. It's not just about poking holes in what others do or say. Indeed, it's relatively easy to point to flaws. It can be harder to identify explicitly what works and why. And that's something we can help students with. And for those students who feel it's negative to point out errors, we can give examples, as in this one illustrated, why it can be helpful to point out exactly where and why things have gone wrong. When exercised correctly, it should be constructive and might even save lives. So that has led us on to the second set of challenges I wanted to consider, which relate to purpose and to value. Students don't always grasp the need to develop criticality or its link with their course or real life. So the next practical thing we can do is to bring out the potential benefits to them and to society generally. So it's useful to make critical thinking concrete, grounding it in everyday benefits and decision making that affect students. For example, everyone should be able to relate to the value of applying criticality when making an important purchase. As a starting point for debate, you could draw on TV programs that examine whether expensive brands are really good value. The arguments students put forward or not on giving up a beloved brand can be very creative and illustrate many of the points you might like to make about critical thinking generally. Um, we seem to be running ahead just by one on the um, slides there. So um, if you can just go back to the previous one, thank you very much. Um, you can look at um, current scams, for example. That can always be quite an interesting way into criticality. Um, and um, you can draw out the sorts of things that students should be alert to, so offers of free money or deals that seem rather too good, maybe offers of essays that could be brought online that purport not to be cheating. Um, all of being critically aware of the pitfalls of not reading small print. You could look at the kinds of situations where students might be particularly at risk. Then there is the importance to citizenship and the big issues of our time, such as interpreting the words and the actions of politicians, clarifying differences in their approaches, deciding who to believe, as well as making critically informed decisions, such as how to vote in elections or referenda. Good criticality can help students to listen to what people are actually saying in an argument, rather than being persuaded by who shouts the loudest. So we have considered already that critical thinking 
is a skill that is required in the workplace. So useful for employability. But it is important too for students as potential employees in their own right to bring a critical eye to such things as their contract of employment. Or even before they apply for a job, before they put energy into making an application, to check out the job details and the person specification to decide whether they and the job are a really good match. We need to help students understand that um, critical uh, thinking uh, has a really important function uh, within um, the academic discipline. So last but not least, there are those benefits to their course. And critical thinking tends to be strongly weighted within marking schemes. As we know, students can tend to drift into description, losing valuable marks and sometimes making many a tutor weep. But critical thinking, although often a specific criteria for assignments, is also heavily implicated in most, if not all, other marking criteria too, such as content, structure, argument, evaluation, the problem solving, reflection, and the presentation. It affects the decisions on what to read, to note, to select for inclusion, and so on. So weak criticality can have a domino effect, affecting all the marking criteria. And even when students do apply critical thinking to what they read, they can forget or omit to apply the same level of critique to their own work. So in terms of practicalities, we can ensure students really understand the various ways that critical thinking impacts right across the marking criteria and how to apply the marking criteria critically to their own work. And this is something to return to across their course, drawing attention to how the expectations for a more refined criticality increase as they move from level to level. The third set of challenges I wanted to look at relate to expertise. Students might be open in principle to developing criticality, but maybe not sure how to go about it or to gain practice. I think that was something which came out quite strongly there in your poll. So for such students, we can provide them with a process with key steps to follow in order to develop a systematic approach and to build their early confidence. And then when you've identified what this process that you think is useful for your students, you can model this in class and apply it uh, particularly to a burning issue in the subject so that students can see its relevance to the course and they have a way of conceptualizing what is expected in terms of a, the discipline and especially you as tutors, how you think about critical thinking. There is um, a basic seven-step process in the Study Skills Handbook to introduce, introduce um, students to critical thinking. Um, and if, if they have that, that sense of a need of a process, and then uh, when students are feeling a bit more confident, they can go into more depth with the Yellow Critical Thinking book. And this, um, the chapters in this carry them through the process. The uh, slide that we have at the moment, I think this was out on Twitter last week, and this shows uh, this refers to critical thinking as a complex process of deliberation. So it's the deliberation that's really a, a really important aspect of it. And this lists some of the elements that go into that process. And we can train students to bring a critical eye to their own work and to their thinking processes. We can help them to consider how to shape and to apply criteria for themselves that they're not reliant just on you as a tutor or the outside world to tell them whether something is good or bad, and to help them to build what feels like an intuitive sense of what good looks like in their subject, whether pottery or heart surgery. The final set of challenges that I want to touch upon relates to gaps in skills that underpin critical thinking. So not necessarily critical thinking per se, but those skills that um, are really important to critical thinking, such as being able to pay attention to fine detail, following through systematically from A to B when following instructions, drawing comparisons or applying criteria. Now, all too often, students haven't even an appreciation that such skills are worth developing or, or are valuable. So we can draw attention to these explicitly and demonstrate how they impact on the success of a task, such as a research or an assignment. You may have spotted these exercises in the, uh, in the, the previous, I did, uh, the, the current edition of critical thinking skills. 
course. And these are designed so students can check how good they really are at attending to detail and to sequence and instructions. And they're quite fun too. They provide practice in channeling attention and being systematic in approach. And they often show students that they're not quite as systematic as they think they are. And of course, students could design their own, uh, their own versions of these. You could, you could have a class competition. So here is a summary of 10 practical things that we can do referred to um, in the webinar. So creating the opportunities, investigating the reasons for different perspectives, using uh, voting technologies for those before and after results to help us to understand uh, how people form and change opinion, setting activities that comp uh, compare um, different sources, considering what constitutes good in terms of the evidence, giving time to addressing the myths and the anxieties head on, bringing out purpose and benefits grounded in the everyday examples, clarify the impact on, gra on grades, providing an outline process to um, guide the systematic approach, um, and then finally, if needed, addressing gaps in those underpinning skills. Now, the good news is there's much that can help with all of this in the critical thinking skills. And as uh, was alluded to earlier, there's a new addition. This retains all the core material, critical thinking skills too. So that's something that you've been working on with students, but brings it up to date. And it contains lots of step-by-step -step guidance on analysis, on developing argument, on developing critical self-reflection, and applying criticality to all of those tasks that students undertake, such as reading, listening, note-making, writing assignments, uh, and lots and lots of practice. The new edition um, has an additional chapter on criticality in the context of employability and uh, applying for jobs, as that's so important within higher education at, uh, at the moment. So you can register, I'm told, for a sample copy of the book if you haven't already. Um, and the other thing we've got with this uh, new edition is a companion site um, for lecturers. The lecturers asked for this, and we have um, provided that. Um, it looks like this. Um, if we can just change that, lovely, it looks like this. And it has some um, supplementary material for students that isn't in the books and lots of slides that you can use or adapt to whatever you like. So it isn't necessarily rocket science, but it's meant to be just helpful to you. So a few examples. Here we've got suggestions of things um, that could be set in advance for a uh, class, particularly if you're using a blended learning technique, and then discussion points um, arising from the prepared works so or the various um, uh, suggestions of what you might want to discuss within class. Um, there are um, definitions, again, which uh, may help um, with uh, discussing what critical thinking is within class. There are slides that refer to the material covered in the webinar here today, such as um, the barriers to critical thinking. Um, and this uh, final slide on the, um, on the website um, makes the point about attention to detail that we've just been looking at. In case your eagle eye hasn't picked it out straight away, the five is repeated on the end of both uh, lines there. Um, you may also find it helpful if you wish to retweet some of my daily study skills tips, um, which include some of these include uh, material on critical thinking. And again, I've included just a couple here in case you wanted to look at those afterwards. So um, that's all that I wanted to uh, say by way of um, this uh, introduction to this part of the webinar. Um, and I think uh, either Amanda or Katie, you'd now like to add a few words. Great, thank you so much, Stella. That was uh, really very interesting. Um, so, by way of wrap up, we just wanted to um, remind you that inspection copies of um, the new edition of Critical Thinking Skills are available. Um, we've included the link on the slide there, um, which will allow you to um, just go in and uh, register for a sample copy. Um, obviously, you will then also have access to the companion website too. Um, so, if you wanted to start using that with students, then you can do so. Um, and then also I did want to just quickly um, mention about um, our classroom response system. So something that Stella mentioned earlier was um, around using voting technology with students. Um, and we do offer a couple of different um, resources in this area. So we have iClicker, which are the physical uh, voting devices, and also Reef Polling, which is our um, mobile uh, classroom response system. Um, and I've also included the link there should you want to find out more about those. 
Um, so now I think we have um, a few minutes for questions. Uh, we're just going to have a quick look through um, the questions that people have been submitting. Um, so if you have any um, additional questions that you'd like to put forward, please uh, feel free to write those in the questions function now. Sorry, just bear with us for one moment. We're just reading through uh, all of the questions. Um, so one question we've had is, um, do you think, Stella, that critical thinking skills are uniform, or do different subjects need different approaches, perhaps? That's a really good question, and I think it's a bit of both. So I think there are certain aspects of criticality which are common to uh, to any disciplines, I think things such as that willingness to be open to different points of view and being able to um, to not just rely upon either a single source or a single solution, but be able to, um, to 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 be able to make comparisons and draw distinctions um, and and look at things critically, looking at things from a sort of a multiple perspective or looking at different um, different points of view. But each subject, of course, does have very um, different ways of looking at criticality. So if we just took engineering and poetry, I think we can imagine that straight away one's much more numerically based and we're looking at kind of numerical problems, whereas what makes a really good poem or what makes a good uh, work of art um, raises a different kind of criticality. Good question. Thank you for that. Um, so another question that we've had um, is, do you have any tips for giving feedback on assignments? Again, a really um, good question. And in some ways, it opens up a little bit more beyond just what critical thinking is to what makes good feedback. So um, I think, again, the context is everything there. But I think um, exercising criticality in how one gives feedback is, is quite useful. And it's quite easy, I think, for us as, as when we're looking at uh, students' work, sometimes to be identifying all those things which we can see um, are showing sort of gaps in, in critical awareness. Whereas sometimes, again, it's helpful to make that mental break and to pause and to think, what is that one piece of feedback or critical feedback here, which would be a, a really helpful learning point for this student. So sometimes less is more. And making sure that the time goes in, because we don't have, all have a lot of time, so explaining one point clearly can be a bit more helpful than just flooding the students with too much information and then referring the students on to resources where they can really follow things up for themselves. So um, I think, it, I think it, it, again, if one can uh, work in teams, that can also help. So if you find there's a particular aspect of criticality that the students are struggling with, bringing that, that out um, at, at, at a class level, but also different tutors identifying where a, a cohort might be struggling and reinforcing that same point by everybody, sort of focusing on that perhaps for a few weeks. Great, thank you for that, Stella. Um, another great question that we've had is, um, what's your opinion of a dedicated critical thinking module as opposed to it underpinning other modules? Yes, yeah, so this question comes up a lot. and I think a lot depends really on, again, on context and how strong the lecture is at making that uh, really interesting. So um, I have seen some dedicated critical thinking modules I'm aware of one within um, psychology at UEL, for example, where um, the lecturer just makes that really interesting. He draws, he makes it very relevant to the, to the discipline of psychology. He draws on really interesting examples from across history. Um, so I think if you can make it lively and dynamic and relevant to the subject, then that's fantastic. Um, if that can be supplemented then by the drip feeding of the modeling across um, uh, students' course right from the beginning, then um, I think uh, even better. Um, I think that the one risk about uh, having a, a dedicated module, if you don't have that supplementary time spent on looking at critical thinking, is that um, you may not bring out the differences and the nuances 
um, of critical thinking as you move to level up through the level. So if critical thinking is brought in at level one, at level two, and when you're moving into dissertation or onto masters, you, you still need to be thinking and developing uh, your critical awareness. And it's not something you can never do as a one-off. I'm still always catching myself. Um, not, not showing sufficient critical awareness and thinking, you know, it's kind of a lifetime task to um, keep on honing that skill. Great, thank you so much for that, Stella. Um, so a couple of questions that um, we wanted to answer that we've had is, um, someone asked, when will the sample copies for new critical thinking skills be sent out? Um, and the answer to that is really they should be um, going out any day now. So the book came into um, into stock in our warehouse, I believe, on Friday. Um, so any uh, previous sample requests that um, were recorded um, will have been fulfilled. Um, and obviously any new ones that we receive will go out immediately. So uh, you should look out for those shortly. Um, and one final question was, um, will this webinar be available to you later um, as someone would like to share it with their colleagues? And the answer to that is yes, it will be. Um, it's all being recorded and you'll all receive a link to it in an email um, after the event. So you can forward that on to your colleagues and share um, the webinar with them to watch and, and listen in their own time. Um, so thank you so much to everyone for coming and of course to Stella um, for talking us through critical thinking skills there. Um, yeah, and we hope you have a, a rest of a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, everybody.